Now we're ready to get started in performing our echo exam. So our patient has been prepared, well positioned, and now we're ready to get started. My thumb is on the thumb notch, and we've applied a little bit extra gel just to ensure we have good contact. And what I will now do is feel for the apex beat, and I'll place the probe in the intercostal space just over the apex beat. Now what we're looking for in this right parasternal long axis view, this is going to be the four chamber view. So we'll be looking at the right atrium, the right ventricle, the left atrium, and the left ventricle. So what we're wanting to do is get it so that the Ventri the left ventricle is horizontal, as horizontal as possible, so that we know that it's truly in a long axis view. By convention, the base of the heart is towards the right of the ultrasound image, and the apex is more towards the left. So we'll just have a look at our ultrasound image and see what we need to do to change it to really optimize our, our right parasternal long axis four chamber view. And it's looking pretty good. However, we don't have a really good crisp view of the left ventricle, so we'll just need to make a few small adjustments. What I'll now do is rotate my probe anti-clockwise, just ever so slightly, always keeping an eye on the image to see exactly how it's looking. And that's much better. If you're losing a bit of the left ventricle off of the left side of the screen, what you can actually do is either move an intercostal space cranially, or you can also slide the probe down towards the sternum a little bit more ventrally. And that's a much better view. We can evaluate various structures on here, including the left atrium, the left ventricle, the mitral valves, the right atrium and the right ventricle to some degree. But really we're wanting to look at the, at the left side particularly on this view. So we're looking to see the contractility, how much the heart is actually doing its job. We can also evaluate the mitral valve leaflets and we can evaluate chamber size. I've just frozen the image, and what we can now do is actually look at the ratio of the diameter of the left atrium compared to the left ventricular internal diameter during diastole. This will give us an idea of whether or not the left atrium is enlarged when comparing it to the left ventricle. We can scroll backwards and forwards through our frozen image bank from this particular scan and just have a look and see if we can catch it in diastole. We don't have the ECG leads attached at this time because most people, not everybody, has this available in general practice. And so what we'll try and do is estimate diastole. And that will give us a fair approximation. So what we'll now do is perform some measurements, looking at, again, the diameter of the left atrium compared to the diameter of the left ventricular internal diameter during diastole. I've put on my calipers. And we've made a measurement of the left atrium. We'll now look at the left ventricular internal diameter. And as you can see, the measurement of both of these is around about three and a half centimeters. The ratio should be one to one of the diameter of each left atrium and the, the left ventricle, the, the, the internal diameter. 
And that's what we have in this case. So this is a normal dog.